Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I am so pleased to welcome my guest today, Alana Fairchild. Alana is a creative visionary, spiritual teacher, and a beloved author from Australia. Her diverse and unique body of work includes over 20 oracle decks, 30 albums of sacred music and meditation, 13 books, as well as numerous online healer training programs in unique channeled healing modalities. Among other modalities, Alana focuses on the divine feminine energy, work in the Kuan Yin transmission, Sarawati healing, did I pronounce that right? Sarawati that. healing and spiritual energy work, including acoustic soul healing and white light frequency healing. To learn more about Alana, there's so much more you can read about. You can go to her website, alanafairchild.com. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to connect with you. So um, can we start this with um, the blessing? Yes, yeah, I just wanted to share a short sound blessing to really connect us to our hearts and our beloved Mother Mary, who's just been so strongly around for the planet and, and in my spiritual practice, I felt quite inspired. So to receive it, I just ask that your listeners connect with their hearts for a moment. Thank you. That was so beautiful. I hope everybody who listened to that can re-listen to it and really let it go into your heart. I think it's so interesting in speaking with you today because our paths are very similar. You know, um, the connection to Mary. Also, um, we had different professions coming into this. So I have an MBA. Um, so before I opened myself up totally, you know, to walking on this path, although, you know, I'm a born medium, um, I was in, you know, the corporate world and you were a lawyer. Yes. Yeah. So, it's funny. It's people sometimes say, how did you end up in that? Like it was a mistake, but I realized I'm looking better. back, it's so beneficial, isn't it? Because it helps you know how to be as a healer and what's actually needed because you've been in the other world where a lot of people are and you kind of know because of your own experience in those two paths about how to bridge them and how to mm -hmm. connect them um, so that people can relate to you and, and you can share them and just what's needed. Yeah. And, you know, you know, from my experience, I learned what stress really is, You're right. you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when people come to me, you know, and, you know, what happens is by the laws of attraction, you know, they're going to come to someone who understands them. I do totally understand. I totally get it. So it's never a mistake, you know, wherever a light takes us, if you go right and then left and right, there's always a learning, right? And that's kind yeah. of what it's all about. So um, it's always interesting to me, you know, when somebody has taken a kind of similar, similar path, you know, but how did you go from being a lawyer into being an international author and you know musician. I mean, your voice is beautiful. How did that all happen for you? 
I usually say that the best things that happened in my life happened despite my best efforts, not because of them. So it's a little bit of bumbling. And I think for me, and maybe others have more clarity, but for me, I really had no idea. I just knew that certain things weren't right for me. And the reason that I knew that is because trying to fit into more of the mainstream way of being was causing me anxiety and depression and I just felt more and more disconnected from myself and at one point the pain was so strong that the willingness to take a bit of a leap of faith and put myself into the unknown became less painful as an option so what actually happened is that I connected with this beautiful lady that did psychic readings and I remember I was nearly finished my law degree and I said to her I don't know what I'm doing with my life I feel like there's something else but this is not it for me and it never occurred to me not once that I would use my spiritual abilities and connection as a form of work I never really thought about it it's just a little bit like it was completely natural for me I never really thought that it could be a value to anyone else to be honest um, and then she just said to me you should be doing kind of what I'm doing but you'll do more and I thought that sounds great and and that was it that was enough I decided not to pursue a career in law I just never really felt right for me although I do understand for some people it is but for me it wasn't and I just started doing uh, readings at a psychic festival that's how I began and I was so excited and terrified simultaneously because I really didn't know what I was doing, but internally it felt right and I felt joy. I felt hope and I thought this energy feels completely different. There's no bleakness, there's no depression, it feels aligned. And so I just went with it and I began doing readings and then I began to teach and then I began to write and then I began to record and things just kind of happened without me really having any idea, but trusting my intuition and trusting the guidance and any time that there is that kind of sense that something needs to happen but I don't know what I don't panic anymore it used to really worry me because I was raised to believe that you should always really be in control and know what you're doing and have a plan and take the steps according to that plan and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that in in certain times in your life it's important but if you try to live your whole life like that which I really was you don't leave any room for spirit to guide you so for me it was sort of learning not to always trust my own sense of how things should be and how to make it happen but more about surrendering into this faith and trust in my heart that the universe somehow had a plan for my life I didn't have to know what it was in order for it to happen I just needed to learn how to get out of my own way stop trying to control everything and see it in advance and just take one step listening to my heart one step at a time and then I found things would happen you know it happens to all of us this way the universe says thankfully thank heavens you know this person's now willing to listen and then we start to see the signs and we Mm -hmm. meet the right people and steps unfold and and that's kind of how it happened you know that's so similar to my story because I also felt like it was like the dark night of the soul. I was depressed. I was unmotivated. I hated my job. I hated what I was doing. I couldn't get out of it. And then it was like, what am I going to do? Where, where is this going? And then I almost died. And I said, okay, God, this is it. You got me. I, that's it. Like, what do you want to do? And no more control because I learned that like I wanted to get pregnant. I couldn't get pregnant. I couldn't control these things. And so now I live in surrender to the universe and truly things come my way. I don't have a mission statement. You know, I don't have a plan. I just let the universe do it. And people will say to me, how do you do it? Well, you believe. You believe that there's something greater that can take you along the way. And that's beautiful. And that's what happens, you know, and I love, you know, you know, somebody else that feels that way besides me um, and <laughs> can lead people into understanding that they can be that way as well is, is pretty great. But your voice is beautiful. Did you sing before? You know, it's so funny. I've always loved singing since I was a little girl, but I had a lot of issues around my voice and I found that I projected pretty much every insecurity and every fear that I had about myself and that I'd picked up from society, you know, about you have to be a certain way and you have to sound a certain way. And all of that kind of went into almost like 
covering up the voice. So whilst I would sing, it was very complex for me and I, I wasn't able to do what I just naturally do now and it feels fine. It's quite relaxing, actually. I enjoy it. So just off the cuff, whatever. But what I've noticed, and I think a lot of people feel this way, it's like the first time they might hear their voice recorded, maybe they have a reading and they hear themselves asking questions. And I found a lot of people would really struggle with that and they'd say, oh, I was, my voice, I can't stand listening to it or it, I'm so embarrassed or I cringe or, you know, and it's like all this kind of discomfort and stuff that we've internalised about who we are without even realising it half the time. You know, it's just the struggle of being in a society that's so externally focused and tends to put this pressure on us to you know do this by this age and look like this and have x y and z in your life mm. and if you don't have that you're weird or there's something wrong with you and all of that kind of subtle form of external control disconnects us from who we really are what we really want in the heart not what we think we should have and I think in that process we can develop this really kind of not very loving relationship very critical very um, fearful of judgment kind of way of relating to ourselves so I found for me the more that I was able to begin to just gently challenge that and just say you know what maybe someone else doesn't know what's best for me maybe they love me and have my best interests at heart but maybe there is something inside of my own being that knows and that the universe is moving the divine is moving to bring that out and to allow that to be the seeds of my path and I believe we all have this it's like the same way that you know how does a caterpillar know how to become a butterfly that's the most extraordinary thing but it happens all the time and I think it's a kind of spiritual intelligence that we all have inside of us and it's only when we really learn to sort of love who we are and be at peace with our weird quirks you know thank heavens or else the world would be very boring so you know learning to embrace that part of ourselves and just say this is me and who knows what I'm supposed to become maybe I'm a grub at the moment mm. but maybe I'll have some amazing iridescent wings as I take this journey but you have to kind of trust yourself and, and learn to challenge the things that you've you know inherited maybe from people who meant well you know, but had their own issues uh, to not allow that to silence you and to not allow that to, to keep you stuck. Because I think if you're in a life where you feel trapped or you feel like it's closing mm -hmm. in on you, it's quite possible that there's a path for you that's very different. So in listening to this inner truth can put you more solidly on your, your path in life, your spiritual path in life. And mm -hmm. is that's pretty much what you're, what you're saying, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how can people truly listen to that, that voice inside of them, that feeling inside of them? Yeah, I think one of the things that's really important for me and that I, I like to remind people is just to give it a little bit of space. You know, it's very hard to hear if you constantly have your mind going over, you know, all of the things that you had to do yesterday and haven't done and the things that you're supposed to do tomorrow. So I think coming to a sense of just giving yourself a little bit of space and that might be five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night where you just switch off and say to the family, this is my five minutes of do not disturb unless the house is burning down time. Mm -hmm. And you just take that moment and just connect with your heart and just say, how am I doing? You know, what am I feeling? Where am I at? And it might be that you do a reading. It might be that you sit and stare at something beautiful in nature or that you hold I don't know maybe your grandmother gave you something a beautiful ring or something and you just take you just have that moment where you just sit and you just connect and you take a moment to give back to your heart and have some space and let yourself reflect because it's very hard to hear guidance if we can't connect with ourselves and take that short bit of time out from the constant busyness of our minds and our day and it's really important, I think, to remember that that doesn't have to be two hours every day. You know, it's just, it can be that short amount of time. I always say that spirit is really wanting to get in contact with us. So even if we just open the door in our life just a tiny bit, that's enough for them to jam their foot in and they kind of push open the door. And, Here are the messages, you know, don't panic. It's going to be okay. And, and things start to flow. But we just, we need that little bit of just switching from day-to-day -day mode. 
into that a more wonderful advice. You know, I think some people just have a very hard time with the overprocessing that goes on in their minds that, you know, we're trained to think and think and overthink. And, you know, going into that place of no think, of just receiving is just, it's a compassion. It's a kindness to ourselves that we need for us and for the people around us that we love. Yeah. So I, I think that people really should follow the things that Alana just brought forward to all of us, because I think you'll find that your lives are less chaotic, you know, and that you'll be more on a solid foundation. Can you share with us more about your work with our five mothers in the Kuan Yin transmission? And what, what is yeah. that? Yeah, so I, I felt really inspired. I've loved Mother Mary my whole life. Um, I love my that. grandmother used to pray. Yeah, my grandmother, whose name is also Mary, she um, she used to pray the rosary when she's still alive every night. Uh, and she's still around me in spirit. But as a little girl, I'd sit on her bed and listen to her. And she'd just you know, be mouthing the words really quietly and moving around the rosary. And she had a big statue of Mother Mary on the top of her wardrobe that kind of looked down over her bed. So I'd sit there as a little girl and I'd hear my grandmother saying her prayers and see the statue and I just thought it was magic, really. So I had that connection. And then to sense the connection of one being, it's like, um, I was thinking about how to describe this the other day, and I thought, it's like, say someone wears a perfume and you love that person and you recognise that perfume as being that person's signature. And then you're out and about and someone else is wearing that perfume and it makes you think of the person that you associate it with, right? It's like, oh, that's the perfume that so-and-so wears. It's like the Divine Mother has a perfume and when you recognise it, you can sense it in other forms. So the perfume of the Divine Mother is in Mother Mary. And when I started to connect more consciously with Kuan Yin, I was like, oh, it's the same perfume. She's there. And then it was Kali, who's this quite fierce, but very protective energy from the Indian spiritual tradition in India. Uh, in Hinduism in particular, but she pops up under a different name in uh, Tibetan Buddhism as well. And I loved her because she was ferocious and you don't normally see the divine feminine in that way. She's normally soft and gentle and, and that's definitely part of her. But Kali and also um, Mother Mary is the Black Madonna. It's very protective and it's kind of like, I used that example from that movie Monsters, Inc. Did you guys have that? Yeah, sure we did see Monsters, Inc. Yeah, so you know that character, I think his name is Sully. He's the big purple and blue mm -hmm. monster. So he looks really like tough and he's fierce and, you know, he, he gets the most screams and he's, he's very terrifying. But he's also got this real soft side. And when you get underneath it, he's, he is actually just a big softy. So there is this sense of the protective divinity like Carly has been quite fierce, but she's very loving underneath and she kind of, terrifies our ego so we learn how to let go and we learn how to stop getting in our own way and we learn how to trust the divine rather than buying into the fear that our mind might be trying to hold us back with so she helps us become kind of more of a friend to ourselves rather than creating a war within between our mind and our heart so there was Kali and then there was the goddess Isis from Egypt her beautiful wings and I could feel and sense the divine mother like mother Mary with her and Tara from Tibet, who's the universal mother. And what I love about Tara is that she's instant. So when we ask for help, she just gives it. It's not like we have to pray really hard for three months and then maybe we might get something. It's just you ask and it's given. And so I thought, you know, these are all the same perfume. And I loved that they came from different parts of the world and completely different spiritual cultures, and yet they're all the same. And I think in this day and age, there's so much diversity and that's wonderful you know otherwise we'd be one garden with one flower it's like we have many many flowers and trees and crazy creatures and it's fabulous but sometimes in all that diversity we forget what unifies us and we forget that we're all just human i saw a post by the dalai lama the other day and he's like you come into the world the same way you're going to leave it the same way we all bleed the same it's like just look for the things that help us feel compassion for each other and help us connect. And so in creating this, I wanted to create a path where people could learn about these different divine feminine beings, learn about the different cultures that they come from and recognise that they're all part of us and then learn how to channel it, how to really feel their energy. Because I think until you really start to feel the divine, 
taking a leap of faith seems like nuts. It just mm-hmm. seems crazy. So I want people to feel it, to recognize that it's real and then choose, you know, if something doesn't work for you, right. there's always many other things that will. And the divine is very generous, I find. So there'll be something that feels good for you. You just got to kind of have a bit of a look until you find it. Yeah, it's like a big buffet. And you Isn't can it? pick what yeah. you want, you know. Um, and, you know, this this energy of, you know, these mothers, they're all part of one energy, you know. Totally. They're part of one. There's, you know, like you said, the fierce, the, the, the kind, you know, there's the one that hugs you and the one that says you better be good. Yeah. You know, it's what it's all about. And, you know, as a messenger of God, the universe brings to us and all cultures, everything that we need from you know that the feminine aspect and it's quite wonderful you know really wonderful you know so um you know i love that that you're doing this work i i you know i wish you were in the united states but um you're not but i but do on, love- it's online so you okay. know we do have students from all over the world um, and I do come to visit America obviously not at the moment but I'm I feel a very strong soul connection with the U.S. and, and what's happening over there and I have toured a couple of times and we'll do so again. Yeah well that that's wonderful I mean you know the fact that people you know these days can get anything online you know they can come and take your classes and I think that'd be a wonderful thing for people to do to experience you know the divine mother in all all aspects of who she is you know, because it's so, it's so important, it's so important to us, you know, recognizing that there are no, um, there are no boundaries, that, you know, everything is, um, we're all a part of each other, and we connect. Absolutely. We connect yeah. that way. Um, were you intuitive as, as a child? Oh, yes. I mean, I've always been super sensitive to energy and feeling things. But as I sort of mentioned in the beginning, I never really thought very much of it. I just kind of thought, well, probably everyone has this. You know, I just thought if it was, that's what I could do, then everyone could do it. And it was really, to be perfectly honest, I'd been doing the work for a while before it really struck home that Mm -hmm. this was not something necessarily that a lot of people had. And then I thought, well, it's so wonderful. And, you know, I get so much support because being human can be really tough. It's oh, like, yeah. especially if you've got a pure heart and you just want to experience mm-hmm. love and it's like the world can be so confusing. And I thought, oh my goodness, spirit, you know, and the messages that I get helps me so much. I want to help others. And so I wrote um, the first Oracle deck that I wrote was the Kuan Yin Oracle. And that's just basically everything that spirit says to me is he's basically in that deck and I remember when I was writing it I thought I don't know if this is going to resonate for a lot of people but I'll just write it and you know and see what happens because maybe there's like I don't know 10 or 100 people that would click with it and it's there's over 50,000 copies in English alone I think and it's been translated like people are really resonating to a lot of the different decks but that one um, the first one really continues to do well and I think it's because people can recognize the truth of that spiritual love it's like smelling that perfume you go oh that's love that feels true and it's such a relief I think for those of us like yourself that are doing this spiritual work when people hear your voice and what you have to say it's such a relief because the energy that's in mainstream culture is very fear driven and it's tiring oh it is tiring tiring (laughs) tiring So what what advice would you give to people in these turbulent times that we're living in right now? I think it's really important to be completely honest with yourself about what you're feeling and to just say, I feel a bit crazy. I feel a bit like I'm being tossed from pillar to post and I need some help. And to recognize that recognition of needing help is not weakness, it's wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's wisdom. So when you can say I need some help, then you can think about, well, where's the best source of that help going to come from? And it's not usually going to come from someone who's in as much of a muddle as you are. You know, you can (laughs) maybe help each other a little bit. But what you really want is to have a firm, steady foundation that you can feel supported by whilst everything around you might be going a bit nuts, whilst your own mind may be stirred up every now and then but you have this place where you can rest 
and feel steady and there's peace and there's a sense of nourishment and joy and it's always there it never goes away never leaves you you know it's always going to be there you just need to turn your mind to it and that's our spiritual connection and it's a little bit like reconnecting with a long lost friend for a lot of people we don't always think about it but if you have that kind of you know that girlfriend that you never really speak to that often I have a girlfriend like this she moved to another state and it might be two years in between us seeing each other might have a few texts but then we sit down to have a coffee together and it's like no time has passed Mm -hmm. at all blah 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 and we're chatting away and it's just the same thing the divine is like that it's never away from us and no matter how long we get caught up in our fear and our worry the moment we decide to come back and connect it's just like it's there and the more that you give it that little bit of energy like a good friend you give that bit of attention send them a text on their birthday (laughs) you take that time to connect with that attention it gets stronger and then what happens is that thing that starts is this kind of maybe quite small you've got to work really hard to find it where's that bit of peace oh there it is oh that's right Oh, Mother Mary's with me. Oh, the universe is kind. And it's this is a growth phase that we're all going through, not a you know, apocalypse. And okay, there'll be a way through it. And you start to calm yourself and you remember your spiritual connection and you settle into your heart. And you just remember the simplicity that spiritual connection is really just the thing that is greater than our limited perspective. So from our limited perspective, when we're in the storm, it's terrifying. But from the greater perspective of spirituality, it'd be like seeing the planet saying, oh, that storm's releasing energy there. And then there's a counterbalance of the volcano there. And, oh, the forests are clearing here. And there's a fire there. And there's rain here. And it's all part of something that's moving. And you also have the sense of, oh, look, that's going to finish quite soon. Can't tell when you're in it. But you sort of start to see from a different perspective. And what happens is that as you practice resting in that, it gets bigger. And then that becomes more of what you rest in. And then the stuff that's going on around you, sure, you'll feel it a little bit, you know, and you'll have to engage and you'll have your struggles because we're all here to grow and learn. But instead of feeling like that rips through you, you have something inside of you that's steady and that's stable. And that's really, you know, I think why a lot of us do the work that we're doing because we want people to feel that. We want people to know that it's going to be okay and that there's something that can support them but they have to make a decision about whether or not they're going to give themselves that little bit of time and then find the practices, you know, might be through your work or my work. There's so many people finding the person that you click with. It's an important thing. And then saying, okay, what practices can I begin to use and and experiment and explore to see what helps you feel like you can drop into that and start to grow it. So you feel more steady no matter what's going on around you. And I feel that as we do that, it's contagious, you know, Mm -hmm. So even if we're not speaking to it, it's that feeling of, why is she so peaceful? Like, I want that, you know, and the energies tends to mingle with each other, you know, and it's a beautiful disease. (laughs) You know, it's not COVID, you know, it's something beautiful, um, you know, and I just love that. Like, we all know what it feels like to be around someone so peaceful. Like, some people get really angry. Like, why is she so peaceful? Doesn't she, is she not paying attention to what's going on? And the answer is, yeah, I I am. But maybe I understand it in a different way, you know? And so to speak to it or not speak to it, you it's, you know, it, it spreads around the vibration because you're raising your vibration when you do that. And it spreads it, yeah, which is really pretty pretty nice your decks are beautiful but you know more than that so i'm opening up um the white light oracle uh, which um christy says people just she can't keep it on her her shelf this is the book that goes along with this so it's not just the cards are beautiful i mean there's so yeah, much right <laughs> i mean i don't know how you have the time to do this i, I don't mean, know either <laughs> Books. I mean, every card is explained in like, and the words are little, okay? Because yeah. um, <laughs> I can't read this without my glasses on. Um, but um, there's so much explained in this. It's so beautiful, you know, the way that you explain it and go into it. So the card right before you came on, I chose a card and this was the card that I chose, um, which is interesting because that's my power animal. Um, so, um, so this was 
the card I chose. Can you tell me something about this? Wait, it's me. I'll answer. Well, so this is the light. It's like the divine light. Um, there's a beautiful story from Yogananda, who um, he was hilarious, but he, he wrote autobiography of a yogi. Which the book is, is this thick, though. Uh, <laughs> For anyone wants to read it, it's a great book, but it's a great book to read during COVID because it's very thick. It is, and it's hilarious. He just tells these stories about holy people in India, and honestly, I spent most of my time laughing reading that book. But anyway, but the, this he shares this short story, and he basically says the divine is like a light, and it shines through. And then there's like a movie playing, and sometimes the movie is a horror movie, sometimes it's a love story, sometimes it's an adventure or a comedy, and, and so on and so forth. But he says that the light is always the same. And he's talking about learning to have faith and recognizing that there's always something that we can use in our life experience, even the negative things, even the things that we may at first think, I don't want that. And through learning to engage with it and coming into that spiritual connection that we talked about, we can grow. So people have probably done this already. Like if you think about something in your life that maybe you didn't want at the time or was really difficult, and maybe it taught you how to be more wise or you learned how much strength you have or something came out of it that helped you become the person that you are today. This is kind of what Yogananda is talking about at one level. So the light is really a reminder. Don't feel if, you know, stuff's going wrong, that somehow the universe, God, the divine has forgotten about you. Not at all. You know, remember that no matter what's happening, there is an opportunity here for you. Sometimes it's like a hidden blessing. You've got to work pretty hard to find it and you won't see it straight away. But there's always something of benefit that can be brought out of every life experience. And I think, you know, sometimes when things go really, really wrong, we just have to think of it like a vote of confidence from the universe saying, I know you think you can't handle this, but I know more than you do what you're capable of. And you have actually got this. So don't panic, just move through it. You know, I believe in you. Everything that you need is going to be given to you because Ains of all the divine light is very generous, creative, responsive. And I truly believe that in every problem that shows up in the world, there will be unlimited potential divine responses as to how it can be resolved. So it's sort of like problem is this much, responsiveness answers solutions are this much. So we just have to keep remembering, okay, I have this to work with, but there's all of these possibilities and not allow ourselves to kind of fall into that trap of feeling just endless despair or hopelessness because that is more terrifying, I find, when you feel that disconnection from spirit. That's the most frightening thing. So you really want to have that sense of, okay, I don't know how, but there's a way through this. And that's kind of what that card's about. Well, thank you. Um, I think that people sometimes have problems because with going to that place, that you're talking about because they feel unworthy like oh my god like how could i am not worthy to be loved so much i am not worthy to you know under not understand but to receive that you know what do you say to people like that yeah look i really get it i really do and i think you know when we're raised to believe that God and the divine or the universe is this sublime spiritual being. And, and we're so messy, you know, mm -hmm. as human, we smell, we, <laughs> we laugh at the wrong thing and we, you know, maybe we swear or whatever. We all have our flaws. But I just remember this beautiful story. Um, it's from a Sufi tradition, I think. And I think it was actually a Christian monk, Anthony de Mello, that might have shared this. I saw it like 20 years ago and it stayed with me and it's this short little story about two pots and they're water carrying pots and every day the servant of the house carries these two pots walks to the fountain fills them up with water and walks back to bring water to the household and one pot is perfect it's just beautiful and the other pot has a big crack in it and the pot with the crack gets a bit depressed and starts to you know get sad because it realizes that it's leaking water. So it never comes back to the house with the full load and it's not as good as the other pot. And then the servant, the water carrier recognizes that this cracked pot is really sad. And out of compassion one day, he says to the cracked pot, what's worrying you? Why are you so upset? Why are you being so hard on yourself? And the cracked pot says, I'm not good enough. I don't do a good enough job. Look at this, I always lose water. 
And so the, the water carrier says to the cracked pot, I just want you to look at the ground on the path, okay? And so the cracked pot says, all right. So every day, the water carrier has the same pot in each arm and walks along this path. So on the left side, going down to the water and then coming back on the other side. And what the cracked pot notices is on the side of the path where the water carrier is walking back and he's leaking water, there are all these flowers. They're not on the other side, just on the side where he's been leaking. And the water carrier says to him, do you see these flowers? And the cracked pot says, yes. And he said, those flowers have grown because you leak water all along that pathway. And those flowers grace the master's table. Oh, I and love that. Isn't it stunning? And the cracked pot just feels this sense that not only is this thing that he thought, okay, it's actually got some beauty that can come out of it. Oh, that's, that's a wonderful story. I really, really, really like that. And it's true. I mean, we don't have to be perfect. You know, mm. I think that's what people struggle with. Like, don't I have to be perfect? Don't I have to follow every rule? No, you just need to be loving and good, you know? Yeah. And if you curse, you curse. But you know what? Yeah. If you love, you know, your fellow human and you're kind, what does it matter? You know, it's, it's all the same thing. So, but I really do like that. I love that story. Um, do you use a certain mantra when you meditate? Do you have a favorite it, mantra? Yeah, it varies. Although the one that I use a lot is really, really simple. And it was taught to me um, by my Tibetan master. And it's uh, Tare. That's it. That's the mantra. And what it means is um, Divine Mother, please be with me. And the reason he taught that really short version is because he said sometimes something terrible is happening, like a, there's a car accident or you see something that needs help and you don't have time to, you know, in the Tibetan tradition, you sit down and you take out your bell and you, because <laughs> you don't have time to sit down and do a practice. You just need something that works in that moment. So now if I'm out and about and Australia's pretty wild, like we have a lot of crazy creatures and critters around here. So sometimes you see things like I'm trying to rescue, you know, some poor little fly that's got trapped in a spider web. And, you know, so, you know, I use the mantra and I'm like, Tara, can you help Tara, Tara? And, you know, if I see someone that's suffering or there's a car accident and I'm driving by and I can't stop or, you know, a Tara, I just send this love from my heart. So that's a way that I kind of use mantra every day. And you can just meditate on it quite gently tare and feel the divine mother in your heart if that works for you but any divine name if you love mother mary if you love jesus if you love uh, durga or kali you can say the name and just feel love in your heart and that's a very simple but very effective way to strengthen your divine connection just want to ask you a question back to um tara you know the uh, the other you know the energy of the mothers what sets her apart, you know, and how do people, how can people connect with her? You know, it's funny, the Tibetans teach that even just, so if you're listening to this podcast and you've heard me speak about her, that in some lifetime, if you believe in reincarnation or some spiritual grace already exists that you've actually heard about her. And so you have a relationship with her already. It's just like you might not remember it consciously. So any kind of heart connection or desire to have a heart connection with a divine being, according to the Buddhist tradition, and I agree with this actually, basically says it's already there. So now it's just a matter of how you want to work with it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to meditate? Do you want to pray? Do you want to maybe Google and learn about her? Or, you know, there's all those different things. But I think there's a couple of things that set Tara apart. One is her swiftness. She's really... Um, a lot of people think she's a great goddess for Westerners because we're so darn impatient. You know, we, <laughs> we want everything right. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So with Tara, she will manifest instantly the response to our question. If we have need to know something, it will come like that. Our biggest struggle is to have enough faith to believe that that's possible and to not get in the way. Because sometimes without realising it, we put these kind of impediments before spirit and we go oh, I really want an answer to this but in our minds we think oh but it's going to need to be six months for that and I'm not quite ready and oh what if it and we kind of set all these walls up so with Tara we really have to be willing to get the answer uh, and to say okay I'm, I'm ready for this I trust that I'm ready to let go of this problem that I might have been holding on to 
as a kind of weird security blanket unconsciously for a while you know what would it be like to not have that anymore to have the solution and our minds might go oh that sounds pretty good but then when you think about it it might be like oh who am I without that problem but you know what will my life be like if I'm not constantly worrying about that so we have to be willing to kind of let go so that's one facet with Tara the other one with her she manifests in any form required so Again, I mentioned Tibetan Buddhism because that's the tradition where she's very strong. But and she is in other traditions. She pops up in Hinduism as well. But in Tibetan Buddhism, they say she will take whatever form. So if the person who's asking for her help needs a car, she shows up as a car. If she needs to show up as an opportunity or a connection, she'll show up in that form. So Tara really shows something that I think is really important about the divine, which is it's incredibly practical. You know, people say sometimes that the spiritual path is this wafty, you know, or it's self-indulgent or it's not about the world. And that's just complete BS. I don't believe in any of that. I find that spirit is very practical, wants to help us deal with our problems, become very real and very connected to our essence and grow our light so that we can help people and, and we can become what we were born to be, you know, that butterfly nature, really give it, literally give it that sense of that light and, and those wings. Yeah, without the complication, you know, it's just kind of letting it happen, letting it flow, you know. Um, so have you written a book specifically about the five mothers? Yes, I have. It's called The Kuan Yin Transmission, and, and that talks about the five different goddesses, how they connect together, some of my life story, because I've got some stories to share with you about, a story, <laughs> uh, about how I found them and, and, and what they look like in our lives when they're in the world with us, you know. And so I, it's like my love letter, really, to the five mothers. And there's practices there that people can do as well. Oh, well, I have to pick up that book. Oh, yeah. we'll send it to you. We'll send oh, it to you. Yeah. yeah. I just, you know, I have to tell you, you know, as you know, you're always the student and the teacher. And I have learned so much from these podcasts about things that I need to learn and want to learn and want to connect with, or things that I have within me that are expressed differently by somebody else. And the language is a little bit different, but it's the same. And it's so exciting. So mm. excited. I don't know how you have the time to do all the things that you're doing. Well, man, I, I don't mean, know either. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I mean, you write books, the Oracle cards, you know, you're doing classes. I mean, I know you were filming something yesterday, you know, it's, I think it's wonderful, but I do feel like spirit does give us the energy to do all these things. Yes, it's like pots on the stove. It, I never used to be able to. I've got better at doing it. I always used to actually feel uh, a little bit of stress and anxiety when I started something and it wasn't finished yet. I really wanted to get it finished. Now I have so many things going at one time. Right. But I, just, I don't try and control it all. I just leave it like pots on the stove. And I know when one starts to bubble, it's like, oh, I need to deal with that today and this. And it's the only way, I think, to not be stressed. So I let spirit kind of push me and that might sound very mystical but it's quite practical you know I think sometimes people would already be able to relate to this say that you're I don't know at work and all of a sudden you feel like gosh your, your child pops into your mind and you you sense something or you suddenly think oh my goodness it's so-and-so's birthday or it's like we get these nudges but it's just learning how to kind of create again some of that space mentally so that we can feel them a little bit more readily yeah, and I think that when you do trust and you live in surrender, you know, there's a peace around that. You know, every once in a while I'll say, like, I'll look at what I'm doing and say, oh my God, like, how am I going to accomplish this? And then I think, hmm, right. you know what? It all happens. It yeah. always does. It just happens, especially I think when your heart is in the right place. You know, um, it all, and that's, you know, what I tell people all the time, like when you surrender, don't surrender with your right hand to take it back with your left. <laughs> you know, people do that all the time. Well, I'm going to give you this, but uh, you're not working fast enough. So if there it comes right, you know, it does, yeah. you got you to, you have to have a little patience too, which is probably like the thing I need to learn most in life is patience. So oh, I get not having patience. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's what people, that's what people do. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting life, you know, it's not easy, it's not perfect, but I, when you walk the path, you know, 
I mean, I know I, you know, I hear from Mary. I talk to Mary. I know she's with me. I can go to her with my problems like I would of my mother. Not that I'm a Christian, you know, I, I do go to Christ. I believe in God. I believe in all of that. But I think when you know that you are surrounded and protected as we all are, it's an easy, it makes it easier. Not that it's perfect, but it's easier. Yeah. 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 And I think that, you know, I, I hope people continue to read your books you know, um, and continue to take your classes because you're bringing so much light to the world. Oh, that's beautiful. Likewise, Anna, likewise, you're doing such beautiful work. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please like, share, and comment on our YouTube channels and on the podcast channel. And please so subscribe so you never miss an episode. <laughs> with all these wonderful people we have on. And thank you so much, Alana. It was wonderful speaking with you. Lots of love to you and your listeners. Thank you.